Okay, welcome everyone. Today's topic is flips versus rentals on a pandemic. So what is it that you need to think about whether you should flip or rent now with this pandemic? So something that you have to keep in mind that we have declining prices coming in the next um, 24 to 36 months, okay? Why are the prices going to decline? Because we're gonna have a huge wave of foreclosures coming down the pipe starting next year, um, spring 2021. So when you have a surplus of inventory coming back into the market, then prices are gonna adjust. Right now, prices are high. Why? Because there's a shortage of inventory. And then having such a low interest rate makes the buyer pool become bigger. Therefore, next year is going to be very risky or even now to start doing flips. Um, my suggestion is that you should focus on wholesaling and rentals. Uh, flips in itself are riskier um, than any other of the two exit strategies, buy and hold and wholesaling. Why are flips risky in itself? Because you have to get three numbers down like to the penny. One, you have to come up with an accurate ARV. Number two, you have to come up with an accurate rehab estimate. And three, you have to buy the property for the right price. If you miss any of these numbers, meaning if your ARV is incorrect or you don't sell the property for what you think you can sell it for, you're gonna, um, that's gonna tap into your net profit. Two, if you do not come up with an accurate scope of work, guess what? You're going to lose money. Three, if you overpay for the property, boom. So you have three moving pieces for a flip. Not only that, but guess what? When you do flips, you're running on the treadmill. So the minute you stop doing flips, guess what happens to your income? Boom, it goes down to zero versus doing rentals. So when you do rentals, not only are you increasing your equity or your net worth on a daily or on a yearly basis, but you're also increasing your cash flow. Why? Because rents continue to go up on a yearly basis. Population continues to grow. Not only that, but the uh, rehab that you do on a rental versus a flip is more flexible on the rental um, because the flip, you really need to do sort of like a high-end um, rehab to command top dollars. So it's a huge difference. And not only that, but the true power in real estate for wealth accumulation is from rentals, okay? Now, a uh, second disadvantage when you take on flips is that a flip is going to trigger a tax event. So when you sell the property, guess what? You're not gonna keep, if you make 50,000 net profit, you're not gonna keep the 50,000, guess what? that's going to be taxable. And not only that, but that can put you into a higher tax bracket, okay? So that's something to keep in mind versus rentals. With rentals, guess what? When you have a rental, you're gonna take full advantage of tax benefits. The biggest tax benefit when owning rentals is depreciation, okay? Number two, uh, when you buy rentals with your entity, guess what? You're going to be able to write off so many expenses that if you make $50,000 a year, guess what? You're going to get to keep most of it, okay? That's a huge difference, okay, when you own rentals versus flips, okay? Now, um, wholesaling, why is that something that you need to keep in your radar? Because it's so easy to start doing wholesaling. Um, not only that, but it's just a quick way to get a, a paycheck, okay? So right now, there's gonna be, as I mentioned earlier, a huge wave of foreclosures coming down the pipe. So guess what? That means a lot of distressed motivated owners who are going to lose their property unless somebody comes and help them. So if you can get those properties on the contract, guess what? You don't need to fund them. You're not buying them. You don't need to rehab them. All you need to do is get them on the contract and sell the rights of that contract to a cash buyer, okay? So my suggestion is to have those two strategies in hand, wholesaling and buying holes. Um, something to also keep in mind 
is that when you do flips right now, if you decide to take on this challenge, there's a formula, okay? Um, whether you flip or rent. So pay attention to this formula. It's very simple. If your yearly cash flow times 10 is greater than your net profit, then you should buy and hold. Okay, I'm going to repeat this. So let's assume that um, your positive cash flow for the property is 400 a month. So that times that's 4,800 a year, positive cash flow. Now that's for one year. Multiply that times 10 years. So 4,800 times 10, that is 48,000, okay? Positive cash flow equivalent in 10 years. Now, if your net profit is over 48,000, then you need to flip. That is the rule of thumb, okay? So let's go over that rule of thumb again. If your net positive cash flow for 10 years is greater than your net profit, then you need to buy and hold. So the example is, if in 10 years you're going to have 48,000 in positive cash flow, but your net profit from the flip is going to be over 50,000, then you need to flip. That's the best rule of thumb when deciding whether you need to flip or rent. Flip, uh, Phil, do me a favor. Uh, everyone on this call, can you post the flip or rent spreadsheet that we created? Um, so all you need to do is plug in few numbers on that spreadsheet, and the spreadsheet is going to tell you whether you should flip or rent based on this rule of thumb. Okay, so if you can just paste it via the chat uh, field, that'll be great. Uh, so you have another framework uh, to work with. Okay, but remember, flipping right now, you have to take into account declining uh, prices. So property prices are going to decline in the next two to three years about 10 to 15 percent. Okay, and that is due to high unemployment, low interest rates, and a huge tsunami wave of foreclosure filings starting spring 2021. Now, why spring 2021? First of all, courts. Uh, are not going to uh, start with foreclosure filings until January 2021, okay? So everything, we have a, a moratorium until December 31st for evictions and for foreclosures. Second, forbearance is going to end on spring 2021, okay? What does that mean? What's forbearance? Just as a reminder, Homeowners who can't afford to pay the mortgage payment can skip payments for up to 12 months. And guess what? That period ends March 31st, 2021. Which means that if those homeowners are still unemployed or unable to come up with now 12 months worth of mortgage payments, guess what's going to happen? The bank is going to uh, take them in the foreclosure process and eventually they're going to lose their home. Okay, so that is why forbearance, and guess what? 10% of homeowners are in forbearance. It's a huge number in the United States. So the opportunities for you and me as investors are tremendous, huge, massive opportunities for next, starting next summer, 2021 through 2025. Okay, so what is it that you need to do today to be ready for this huge opportunity? You need to do two things. You need to stash cash, meaning you need to have liquidity, number one, and most important. Number two, you need to become familiar and become the best at the strategy that you pick, whether you're going to do flips, buy and holds, or wholesaling. Stick to one or two strategies and become the best at finding great deals, okay? Listen to what I just said. Become the best at finding great deals. So regardless of your strategy, whether you do buy and hold, fix and flip, or wholesale, if you're able to identify and get a property that is a home run deal on the contract, guess what? That's when you're going to start making money. Not when you rehab the property, not when you rent the property, not when you flip the property. You start making money the minute you get a great deal on the contract. Um, so let me give you an example. We... Uh, got a property on the contract in Ukrainian Village last uh, last year, 
for about 110,000. We turn around and we put it on the MLS for about 200,000. We got full asking price offers. So we made, you know, after all holding expenses, current costs, we made about 60,000. Uh, but that's because we got a great deal on the contract. And that doesn't come easy and it's not easy to find them. But that is why you join our webinars, because we want to make sure that you become the best at identifying great deals. So how do you identify great deals? You need to, uh, number one, pay attention to the neighborhood. The neighborhood, the area needs to support your exit strategy. So if you're thinking um, about flipping or buy and hold, that neighborhood needs to support that strategy. So in Chicago Deal World, we can help you if you do not understand or do not know what areas support what exit strategies, please let us know. We'll send you the summary, okay, for the neighborhoods and what areas and what strategies they support. Number two, you need to have, when getting the property in the contract, you need to know two things. Uh, ARV, it's number one. And number two, how much you should pay for the property. And obviously, number three, it cannot be a gold rehab, okay? If it's a gold rehab, then uh, your numbers are gonna drastically change. So when you know the ARV, the after repair value, how much you can sell the property for after you, you done the rehab, that's step number one, okay? Number two, you need to have at least a $100,000 spread regardless of your exit strategy. So what does that mean? You find the property, let's say in uh, Naperville, Okay, for it's a condo or a townhouse, and the ARB is 250,000. Okay, that means that you need to get that property in the contract for no more than 150,000. So you need a hundred thousand dollar spread. That spread, along with a light to medium rehab, is going to guarantee a home run deal. So I'm going to repeat the formula for finding home run deals location, location, location. Okay, you need to focus on areas that support flips and uh, buy and holds. There are some areas that don't support neither one of them. Okay, let me give an example. For instance, depressed neighborhoods such as Riverdale. You cannot flip a property in l less than seven months there. You cannot get a collectible tenant in less than three to four months, okay? So those distressed neighborhoods you cannot get into because you're going to struggle trying to do any of the exit strategies. So look for neighborhoods that ideally support both flips and, and buy and holds. Step number one. So step number two, once you believe you have a great deal, find out what the ARV is. Okay. And we can help you with that. Um, so if the ARV comes to, let's say 200,000, 250,000, just subtract a hundred thousand. And that's how much you need to get it on the contract for with the assumption that the rehab is light to medium. So what does that mean? Rehab should not be more than $40,000. That makes a rehab light to medium, okay? That's just the rule of thumb. So the question is, how do I come up with uh, the dollar amount for a rehab on a property? Very simple. What we're going to give you is we're going to give you a, a chart, a field. Um, please uh, make this available uh, for people who send you an email today of the chart uh, from the previous webinar on how they can come up with an accurate uh, rehab estimate. But let me tell you the rule of thumb. If the, we categorize the rehab into three stages or three types. Number one, it's light meaning you're going to need to do carpet and paint, okay? That's the minimum you're going to need to do. So if the property is under 2,000 square feet, then the rehab is going to be no more than 15,000. That's simple. If the rehab requires, obviously, paint and carpet or flooring, and on top of that, you need to update the bathrooms and the kitchen, that's a medium rehab. And guess what? If the square footage is less than 2,000 square feet, then your rehab amount is going to be between 35 to 40,000. That's it. If you need to redo systems like HVAC, electric, plumbing, uh, roof, windows, that's a good rehab, okay? That's gonna be way over the 40,000. 
uh, and then the numbers are not going to work. Okay, so you should focus on properties that require very, very little rehab because we are in the business of investing. We are not in the business of construction or rehabbing. That's not where the money is. In fact, if you take on big projects, that's where you can lose a lot of money. Okay, so as a rule of thumb, please focus on light to medium rehabs uh, and then use the formula that I gave you to find great deals. So again, I'm going to repeat that. You need to focus on properties that are ideally in B neighborhoods, uh, A minus neighborhoods. Okay, right now the C and D, meaning the challenging and more distressed neighborhoods, guess what? They were affected the most by the pandemic. Uh, because those people lost their jobs. So there are blue collar employers, I mean, employees. That's where you're going to struggle the most. C and D neighborhoods. So please focus on B minus, B plus, A minus neighborhoods, uh, because that's where your flips and buy and holds are going to be most successful. You're going to minimize your risk and maximize your profits. Okay, super important. And then second of all is the rule of thumb that I gave you of the $100,000 spread for the flip or for the rental. Super important with the rehab being less than uh, 40,000, okay? So now just to quickly summarize what you need to do now, what you need to focus on due to the pandemic, right now you need to focus on liquidity. You need to take care of your FICO score. Try to keep it as high as possible and you need to be liquid. If you have equity in a property, try to refinance, uh, cash, uh, do a cash out, because you're gonna need to have liquidity. Let me give you an example. So we got, um, in the last two months, a couple of properties on the contract. So when I called the Harmony lender, I said, um, hey, Brandon, you know, we got a, a deal on the contract. He goes like, awesome, Hugo. So send me two things. I need the contract and I need your uh, liquidity, meaning bank statements, your latest bank statements, last two months. That's all they care about. Right now, we're, we're doing a couple of refinances. Again, so I, I spoke with a couple of uh, Harmony lenders who are also doing refinances, meaning turning the uh, fix and flip loan into long-term rental loan. And they said, Hugo, um, please send me the lease and your bank statements. So they want to see liquidity. That's all. That's all they care about for you to get funded and for you to get uh, to finance, refinance properties. So obviously, lenders are looking for great deals where you have a lot of equity and that if you keep the property, you're going to cash flow. Okay. So they're looking for at least a 20% surplus cash flow which means that if the uh, mortgage payment plus the operating expenses are, let's say 800, you need to collect at least 1000 in rent. So you need to cash flow 20%. That's what they're looking for, okay? Uh, so when you buy a great deal with at least 100,000 uh, spread, you're gonna meet the lending criteria with Harmony lenders, private money lenders. Now, if you decide to take the route of the flips, which again, I said, it's very risky, you always need to keep in mind that you need to make at least a 20% return on the flip. So what does that mean? Let's assume that you uh, buy the property for 100, you put in 30,000, so all in 130, and you sell it for 200,000. So 20% return of 200,000 is 40,000. So you multiply, 20% times 200,000, so that's 40,000. So unless you make 40,000 on your flip, then you shouldn't do a flip, okay? So that's the second rule of thumb if you're considering flips. Uh, rule number one, you're gonna need to take uh, your positive cash flow as if you were to keep the property, multiply that times 12, meaning 12 months, and then 10 times 10, meaning 10 years. If that amount, is greater than your net profit on the flip, then you need to keep it. Else, you need to flip it. That simple. Something to keep in mind is right now, if you get a property in the contract uh, and you have that spread, when you 
come up with your ARV, knock off about um, at least five to 10, 10% of that, okay? You need to be very conservative on the ARVs. Number one, appraisers, banks are being very conservative <clears throat> on the declining prices. So your ARV may not come as high as where you think it should, okay? So something to be aware of. And that is very critical because you need to have that spread, that equity for you to be able to refinance on the back end because we're buying these distressed properties using hard money lenders, okay? Or private money lenders, meaning asset-based lenders. They care about the deal. They don't care about your W-2s, 1099, even your experience. They wanna make sure that you have a great deal and that you do proper due diligence for either a flip or a buy and hold. Does that make sense? So um, number one, as I said, liquidity, take care of your FICO score. Um, you're gonna have tremendous opportunities next year, okay? Because uh, nothing is gonna happen with foreclosure filings or even evictions anytime soon this year due to elections primarily uh, and the moratoriums that we have in place until the end of the year. So things are gonna start to kick in and happen uh, starting March, 2021, but you're gonna st start to see the foreclosures really s going through the roof by um, next summer and fall. Therefore, you need to be ready, not only to have cash, you need to have knowledge. And if you lack either knowledge, cash, or you don't have the time, guess what? You need to find another partner, okay? That he or she brings what you lack. So you, you need to complement each other's strengths. That's all you need in real estate. You're gonna need time, money, and knowledge. If you don't have all those three pillars, then you've gotta need to find a partner, okay? Very simple. Um, so again, flips are very risky. You need to get three numbers down, the ARB, the rehab, and <clears throat> buying it for the right price. Um, not only that, but they trigger a tax event that can put you at a higher tax bracket. Uh, the government or IRS is going to tap into your net profit. That's the sad story of the flips. Not only that, you're not building wealth. You're just getting a big paycheck, okay? So you need to constantly run on the treadmill for you to make a living. That's not financial freedom. When you own rentals, you can be out of commission. You could be on vacation. You could do nothing and still get passive income through rentals because the tenants are going to be paying for your mortgages, your operating expenses, and on top of that, they're going to put money in your pocket. That's true financial freedom, okay? Other people running on your trend meals, okay? So at this point, you will leverage from other people's time and other people's money. Super important to focus on rentals and wholesaling. Wholesaling, why? Because there's going to be a huge wave of distressed owners. Uh, already we have thousands. Right now in Chicago, the evil, we have over 40,000 um, foreclosures. Guess what? By, by uh, summer next year, that's just going to double. Why? 10% of homeowners in the US are in forbearance. And right now there's a backlog in foreclosure filings. Already people in financial distress, plus with over 20% unemployment rate, that's just, do, do you know what that means? I mean, high unemployment, forbearance, it's, um, it's just a formula for a huge opportunity for you and I. Um, and in the meantime, we're gonna be able to help other people in distress so they don't lose their property. We can buy them, um, um, pay 50, 60 cents on the dollar. So everybody wins. The bank doesn't foreclose on them, they get to uh, walk away with uh, some sort of like a moving package, 10, 15, 20,000, and we end up with an awesome homegrown deal paying 50, 60 cents on the dollar. Super important, friends. Um, but again, I want to stress the importance of uh, buy and hold because you do not trigger a tax event when you buy properties. Not only that, you take advantage of the biggest tax benefit, which is depreciation. So if you get to make $50,000 a year with rentals, you're gonna get to keep most of it, okay? <clears throat> um, and right now, if you own properties free and clear or you have a lot of equity in some properties, please consider um, doing a refinance or taking a HELOC, 
home equity line of credit. Why? Because you need to have liquidity, you need to have cash, and guess what? Please take advantage of such a low interest rate right now. I mean, you're looking at in the low threes, four percent. Right now, uh, the refinances that we're trying to do, we're looking in the mid fives. I mean, we've never seen such a historically low interest rate. So take advantage of these to refinance your high interest rate loans. And if you have equity in properties, do a HELOC. Why uh, refinance cash out, do a HELOC? Because that is not going to trigger a tax event. Uh, if you take out a loan, if you take out money or a withdrawal from your pension plan, 401k, guess what? that's going to trigger a tax event, a penalty, 10%. Unless you're affected by COVID, they're gonna weigh that. But the smart thing, what the pros do in real estate, they refinance, okay, to tap into equity and, and convert that into cash. Super important, okay? And especially right now that interest rates are so low. So you can imagine the increase in refinances right now. They've gone through the roof. They, uh, they have increased compared to last year over 150%. So right now, the backlog in refinances is like month and a half in, uh, for some commercial banks. Month and a half. If you submit everything to underwriting, you may need to wait uh, six to eight weeks before uh, underwriting takes a look at your application. It is, it is in such a high demand, but it's what makes sense right now for you to have liquidity. Um, so again, Phil, please make that a spreadsheet available to every single one on the line, um, whether they should flip or buy and hold, because all you need to do is plug in a few numbers like ARB, rehab, and your um, monthly income from the rental, and then it's going to do the whole analysis for you. The cash flow is gonna tell you whether you should buy and, um, or flip, but remember, keep in mind, declining prices for next year five to ten percent be very conservative on your arv <clears throat> if, if you have a question on any property what the arv uh, should be please send us an email to support at chicagodealable.com and guess what we are going to do a cma for you meaning we're going to pull comps we're going to compare your subject property apples with apples to give you an accurate arv that is going to be conservative okay uh, so you can count on us with uh, our resources for your support. I want to make sure that you are successful today, that you prepare today for tomorrow. In fact, let me tell you, this week um, I met with um, the owners of ILFLS, uh, Bard and Peter. They are the number one buyer at judicial auctions, okay? Um, so we are strategizing right now, what is it that we're gonna do today to make you more successful um, <clears throat> early next year, okay? Super important to right now take a step back and do um, two things. Try to get a partner that complements your strengths and uh, number two, take care of your credit and have liquidity. Right now is the time to save, stash cash, because you've got to be ready to pull the trigger. And that's what the lenders are going to be looking for. They're going to be looking for those reserves. Down payment, you're going to be looking at 15% down payment on the property. Okay, but guess what? If it's a great deal, and even if you don't have the money, but you got it on the contract, there are going to be plenty of people with cash who would like to partner up with you. Or you can just wholesale the deal. So remember, you're going to be making money in real estate when you get a great deal on the contract, not when you rehab it, not when you rent it. No, you get you you make money when you get a great deal on the contract because you're going to either be able to keep it for yourself, do a flip or a rental or wholesale it. Um, are there any questions on the line? Phil, thank you for showing that spreadsheet. Are there any questions? I've given you a lot of information, but I just want to, um, you know, summarize it, keep it simple uh, so that you are prepared, that you understand what you need to do, when you need to do it. Um, and then, Phil, do me a favor. Um, please give everyone who does not have access to Chicago Dealable for free for the next 30 days. Please paste in the chat 
the instructions to get free access to Deal Vault. And not only that, but we're going to give them two free tickets to the upcoming three-day event organized by Andrew Holmes on October 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Two free tickets. Okay, so that's a combined value of over $500. We're going to give you tonight for free. So, um, Phil, please uh, send the instructions to not only get free access to Deal Vault, uh, that comes with unlimited one-on-one -on -one training via Zoom, but also two mm -hmm. free tickets to the upcoming three-day event by Chicago RIA, okay? And on top of that, we're going to give you the spreadsheet that you are seeing on the screen. Uh, yes, I already shared, Hugo, and the promo code is FLIP. Uh, Bradley here has a question. He says, wholesaling is treated as ordinary income, correct? Uh, absolutely. So wholesaling uh, fees are uh, considered, it's called earned income. So you're gonna be taxed on it and you're running on the treadmill, okay? Uh, and not only that, but if you decide to do wholesaling, think about it twice. Because you know what, friends? What I've seen in the past is that, like the wholesaler who gave us the property in Ukrainian Village, I mean, he made $15,000 on that wholesale fee. But guess what? If he had found a partner, he could have made Two, three, four times that amount. Okay, so if you have a great deal, don't give away the golden goose. Keep it. Find a funding partner, and guess what? There are going to be plenty of them. Uh, there, are gonna, there are many cash buyers members in Chicago Deal World who are looking for great deals. So if you have a great deal, believe me, funding is the easy part right now why because there's such a shortage of inventory so if you come with the golden goose guess what they're gonna come uh knocking at your door like five ten cash buyers it is that simple are there any other questions on the line Pio? uh we have ken and carmen who ask if you already have deal vault do you get free tickets for the three day Absolutely. If you join tonight, just for, for the people who join tonight, we're going to give them two tickets for free. Okay. Great question. Are there any other questions? Uh, we have one more from Bradley. Are you worried about trends of people moving out of cities because of the pandemic? Um, <clears throat> so great, great question. We're not concerned about that. And in fact, people are moving away from Illinois uh, for two reasons. One of them is uh, taxes. So I've seen the trend of people going to Indiana because property taxes are so low. Um, there are so many benefits in other states, like even Florida. One of, uh, like uh, Russell Walker, I spoke with him this week and he's one of uh, the top wholesalers also in Illinois. He's moving to Florida as well. Uh, better opportunities, uh, no state tax. So, but we're not concerned about that. Why? Because guess what? Still, there's such a great population in uh, Illinois, especially in the Chicagoland area, that there are tons of people and very, very few uh, properties available for rent and for sale. So we're going to capitalize on that starting next year. Okay, we're going to be able to provide a product for renters and uh, homeowners, okay? So we're not concerned about moving away um, because there's still such a great demand for a great product, meaning a great property, okay? Either for rent or for uh, homeowners. So yeah, that's not a concern at all. But we've seen that trend, very accurate, very accurate. Any other questions, friends? Okay, uh, we have one more from Ken and Car Carmen. Uh, Hugo, do you make more on a wholesale fee using transactional funding and do the cash buyer know if you are making more money using transactional funding? Okay, um, so the question is, when do you want to use transactional funding. Uh, that, that's a little bit more complicated, but let me just quickly tell you. Uh, when you wholesale a deal, the concept of wholesaling means that you get property in the contract and you're selling the rights of that contract 
to a cash buyer or investor, okay? You're not actually buying the property, but um, you can, if you're gonna be making more than 10,000 on the wholesale fee, guess what? Since you need to disclose that amount uh, or meaning your fee to the buyer and to the seller, guess what? They may get upset if you're making more than 10,000. So you may need to do a double close. And to do a double close, you have two options. Either you use the funding from your end buyer or you can use transactional funding. Uh, the cost of transactional funding is about 1.75 or up to 2% of the uh, loan amount. What it means is that you're buying the property temporarily for um, back to back because you are doing two closings back to back. So you, you're just borrowing money for just a couple of hours. You're going to pay for it. Um, but there's a better way to avoid that 2%. Instead of using transactional funding, you can use the end buyer's cash to pay for the property. So you do not need to use transactional funding uh, when doing a double closing. You're going to be saving uh, thousands, okay? So we can give you the details. If you're interested in doing like double closing, if you have a property you want to wholesale, you're going to be making more than 10000 please do not do an assignment because the property can fall through the cracks. You need to do a double close and you don't need to use transactional funding. We can use the end buyer's funding to do the double close. Super important, doing a double close keeps your fee, your wholesale or finder's fee um, hidden from both the seller and your end buyer. Great question.